All right, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the NAGA. This is Commissioner Pasta on the mic. I get to commentate this great game for you today between the Raleigh Royals and the Memphis Liberty. A huge rivalry here in the Southeast Division as the entire league begins to make their playoff push here in week number seven of a 10-week season. Memphis coming in atop the division at four and two, and Raleigh not a good stretch as of late. They are two and four overall. Taking a look at the team ranks here, We'll start with Memphis. They are third ranked in total offense with a third best pass offense, 10th best run defense. The thing that's really been bringing them down, though, is their passing defense, which is second to last. But their run defense, on the other hand, is second best, leading them to a 19th ranked defense. Now, on the other side, Raleigh who also has a top-five passing offense. They're fourth, led by second-year man Marcellus Walker, the first-round draft pick in last year's draft. They have 11th total offensive rank and 18th run offense rank, but their defense, to the surprise of everyone, myself included, are the second-best in the league, of course, being led by veteran defensive back Stephen Dunn, formerly of Iowa. They have the 8th best passing defense and the 4th best rushing defense. Despite trading away their best defensive lineman in Cameron Parrish, he's on Brooklyn now. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how these defensive players fare, and we'll see how they can stop Jalen Weathers and former Raleigh Royal Marquise Collins, who will be against the Royals today. We will see what the guys think in terms of the predictions. 3 out of 4 taking Memphis 72% chance to win for the Liberty here in Memphis. We will see how these two teams fare here as we get you down to Memphis, Tennessee. Cloudy skies here this afternoon for the Royals and Liberty as they do battle. Memphis sporting their red alternators today in place of the traditional blue and red home jerseys. As we will kick off here, Casey Bueller to kick it away, and Tyrese Redmond, the former Tornado, to return. And he will get out across his 15 to the 16-yard line. No real big splashes, I would say, for Raleigh at the trade deadline. They did end up getting Trey Douglas, former St. Louis Shark, and I believe former Virginia Beach Mariner, if I'm not mistaken. I know he was on a, a different team in between those two teams, but he is now sporting the red and white as that pass will be caught by the aforementioned Marcellus Walker. He is their number two receiver, but the 24-year-old from Bama with elite development was a first overall pick by Raleigh in season two and has really come on as one of their premier targets Go! on offense. Here's George Colvin as he'll get the bulk of the work today in the running game. Of course, with the departure of Marquise Collins, they bring in Colvin, who was a 15th overall pick in this year's draft. Colvin playing his college ball at Troy down in Alabama. <laughs> Here's Colvin on the run, and good tackle by the veteran linebacker. That's Michael Wells, 51. Chris Bond coming into the game.
Bond heavily utilized <laughs> for his speed. We'll see if we get to target here. No. Pass is caught by Walker. And Tremaine Ball will bring him down. Taking a look at Jake Britton's stats last week, he was 19 of 37 for 251 Go. and two touchdowns. Britton's pass caught. That's the newly acquired tight end, Trevor Robertson. And uh, I may have lied when I said they didn't make any splashes in free agency, because they did. They got Trevor Robertson, formerly of Vancouver and Virginia Beach, now in his third team overall. Hike. Traded, I believe, for John Gunter, the tight end swap. I will confirm that. Robertson came over in the Douglas Douglas came over in the Robertson deal and speaking of trade deadline acquisitions there is Charles Thurston the man they call Chuck Thirsty former Brooklyn Bandit the veteran defensive tackle Britain's pass knocked away great defense by Memphis and Raleigh will send out the punting team here on fourth down. It'll be John Marston in pun formation, the former Iowa Storm member. Away. And this will be Jalen Pinkerton to return as he breaks free. And he'll finally be dragged down. Out across the 25 and the 26, and we get to see Jalen Weathers for the first time. And more importantly, we get to see Ahmad Banks for the first time in the red, white, and blue. Banks wearing 18 on the left side of your screen. Weathers looking around, going to throw it away under heavy pressure there from the Raleigh defense. Injuries for Raleigh today include fullback Josh Lemmer and guard Solomon Thompson. Replacements today for those guys. 25 Adrian Austin was signed last week at the fullback spot. And 60 Scott Patterson gets started at left guard. Second and ten. Here's Marquise Collins, his former team. Good gain there, about four. That's Jacob Fraser on the tackle, 56. Second round pick was Fraser out of the University of Oregon. Third and six. Man in motion here is Wade. Weathers will throw. Pass is caught. That's Andrew Moore. And he will have enough for the first. Trips to the left for Memphis. Just under halfway through this first quarter. Weathers looking to throw here. Has a man. Oh, it's almost intercepted. I believe that may have been a Robert Hale 58 in coverage. That was a dangerous ball there from Weathers. Second down. Two tight ends and the fullback in the game. Goal line set here. Weathers, pass, caught, Collins. Shakes off the done hit, but Amari Lawson there for the tackle. As Jesse Lane will come into the ball game. The backup running back, who was a starter on Albuquerque before he was traded. Seems that a lot of teams are utilizing the RB1, RB1A strategy. As Lane here on the carry, and he will 
push Devante Gladney for the first as they are well inside Raleigh territory now. Flag on the snap. Collins has a big run down the right side. And this should stand as the call will be an offside penalty. But they'll take the yards. First down, Liberty here. Taking a look at Collins' rush stats. This past week had three touchdowns in the program, 22 carries for 146 yards. As Jesse Lane goes nowhere, as Charles Pope seemed to stay up there, not really sure how. Second and 14. That is under center. He'll hand it off to Collins. And he'll be met there. Tackle is made by 29. What, should I know who that is? Or is it 25? I don't know. Regardless. Lane gets the and he will be stopped. That's done on the tackle. Fourth down. Should be sending out Bueller here, and they will for the field goal. This kick is perfect from 42. So we do have a score in the game. It's 3-0 Liberty. Bueller to kick it off. Redmond once again to return. Out across his 20 and won't get by Atkins. Stopped before the 25. So a new drive for Raleigh. We'll see if it can end better than the last drive, which they punted. Colvin on the toss, and he'll go nowhere. Webb and Wells in there on the stop. They'll say no gain on the play, and it will be second down and ten. Bunch formation to the left, including Robertson, the tight end. They'll run it that way with Colvin, and again, Memphis run defense is right on the ball. That's Vince Kelly, who... Memphis is, I'm sure, joyed to have back. Missed the last couple of games with a nagging injury. So uh -oh. Kelly on that last tackle. Third and nine for Raleigh. Pass is caught. One hit and grab by Matt Newcomb. The backup tight end, and he has enough for the first. And of course, was the starter here in Raleigh for a couple of seasons until... John Gunter came around, and then Trevor Robertson. Oh, just can't find the playing time, it seems. But a big third down conversion there. Go! In the shotgun, looking to throw. Trying to go to Robertson, and he catches it! Trevor Robertson on the corner route, a big gain of 33 yards. Wow, and that is why tight ends are so important. Colvin, carry. he'll break a tackle. He'll get inside the 30. And it'll be second down and short here. As Raleigh knocking on the door of the red zone, we can see our first touchdown of the game if this drive goes well for Raleigh. off to Bond. Look at him get the outside edge. Chris Bond inside the 10. 
How about the explosive speed of Chris Bond, the backup running back from Meridian, Mississippi, played his college ball at Ole Miss, just 25 years of age as we end the first quarter after that electrifying run from Bond. Trips to the left to start the second quarter for the Royals. Their ball at Memphis's nine. Pass to the end zone is knocked away. Trying to hit, I believe it was Redmond there. Here's the toss, Colvin. He's gonna find his way to the end zone. Touchdown, Royals. So our first touchdown of the game gives Raleigh the lead here early in the second quarter. Extra point upcoming from Nate Gilroy. Kick is good. Tory Wade on the kickoff return, and he'll be stopped just outside the 15-yard line. Both teams on their special teams game today, that's for sure. First and ten as Memphis starts a new drive. It will be the fullback here, Adrian Austin on the carry. You won't get very far. Tackle was made that time by Jalen Madison. An injury on the plate didn't actually catch who it was. It could have been Austin, actually. This guy, Jesse Lane, is in the ballgame. That is almost picked. That was Devontae Gladney in coverage. As, actually, now that I think of it, that Austin injury may be very costly to the, Me the Memphis running game as Jesse Lane, I believe, will take over as the fullback. Collins on the carry and Gabriel Ramirez says no. So I wonder if that means we'll see more of Isaiah Bird, the third string running back. They also actually have a fourth running back. It's the 30-year-old veteran Dwayne Copeland. Madison here on the punt return. Couldn't break Wade's tackle. Raleigh ball up 7-3 near midfield. Written under center, Colbert in the back for the little play action. Pass is caught, second catch for Matt Newcomb. That's good for six. Another two tight ends set for Raleigh. <laughs> Second and four. This is a hand out to Colvin, and he will push his way forward for the first. Another run play here with Colvin. Tremaine Ball there on the stop as Chris Bond will come back into the game. Seems that like they want to get these running backs a lot of touches here. Especially in early downs. I wonder if that's a result of Raleigh's constantly changing play calling. As Bond goes nowhere, it's Jorge Rivera. And it was an injury to Austin, but luckily he is back. So that's good.
Set hut! Dragon again. Tried to take the second tackle, but Adrian Atkins brings him down. Field goal upcoming here for Raleigh. Gilroy's kick is right through. Good from 47. This is a seven-point game. Gilroy to kick. Wade will not return this one. New drive will begin at the 25 for Memphis. Collins on the carry. Second down and four. Play action for Weathers under pressure. And he will go down. It's the veteran Brad Goodrich making the sack. Former Columbus sender. Toss play with Colin. Another great defensive stop. Again, that's Goodrich. Both defenses have been great at stopping the run today. As far as I've seen, have been able to get by the offensive linemen and blocking tight ends. And into that backfield, George Cashman to punt. First down at the 35 for Raleigh. Colvin on the carry. That stop made by the strong safety, Kendarius Holiday, former Portland Grizzly, I do believe. Let me just double check that. Yes, I am correct. Colvin averaging under four yards to carry so far, 11 for 40. Britton going to go deep again for Robertson. He overthrew him. Hit him on the 33-yard corner route, very similar to that in the first quarter. Five wides here, third and nine. Walker in short motion to the near slot. Britton, going deep here for Redmond. It's a big catch. Right over Tremaine Ball in coverage. And the deep ball Memphis defense continues to struggle here. No wonder why they are 23rd in the league in passing yards allowed per game. Robertson in motion. Colvin will not get very far. Trayvon Webb on the tackle. Another former Raleigh Royal. Also from Iowa Storm. Here's second and 13. Colvin. And Pinkerton that time on the tackle. In about seven, and Chris Bond will come back in on this third down play. We'll see if they can use him out of the backfield here in the passing game. Like? No, they'll actually run it with him. Oh, and maybe that's a better idea. Chris Bond down inside the five. Who needs to pass on third down when you have this guy?
Just hand it to Chris Bond and good things will happen. 11 yards per carry for the speedster. Another hand off to Bond and he walks right in for the touchdown. How about the day for Chris Bond thus far? Of course, many in the media thought that Raleigh would actually roll with Bond as the starter for the season. And as Raleigh would wrap up, brings it up with his tackle breaking, another physical attribute, because he's not that strong, but he can fly with the best of them. But uh, they do decide to go Colvin, relegating Bond to backup duties. And uh, he's still had a great year, I, in, in my eyes anyway. I mean, just taking a look at his total rushing stats coming into this game, which we will do. Bond's total rushing stats, 43 carries, 223 yards and a touchdown. He's averaging over five yards a carry on the ground. I mean, even his receiving stats aren't half bad. Nine catches, 93 yards and a touchdown. Just got touched on today. I mean, how, how can you not like that as a coach? Pass is caught. Brandon Baker. As Memphis looking to get anything going on offense. May have been held to three points. And their defense cannot stop this Raleigh offense so far in the first half. There's counterplay to Collins, getting good blocking on the outside from Ahmad Banks. And even though Ahmad Banks has not been targeted, I don't think, he hasn't made a catch, that's for sure. He still gets productive blocks on the outside for their running backs. Two-minute warning is upon a 17-3 to Raleigh hour score. Memphis with the ball. Collins, get very far, Fraser on the tackle. to throw. Oh, that was almost intercepted, but Brandon Baker comes and saves the day. First down, Ford Liberty. At the 30, Weathers under center, Austin in motion to the left. He'll throw. Weathers has a wide open main, but it's dropped. That was going to Banks. And I think I was actually knocked away, not dropped. But regardless, had him open, just could not get the ball into his hands. Second down, Banks in motion now. Hike. Weathers to throw. Here's going to Banks, and another nice play. I believe that was Jalen Madison knocking it away. Although weather is not a great throw decision in double coverage. Seems like he's trying to force the ball into Banks' direction, trying to get him that big first catch. Third down. Weathers. Look. Pass. Deep. Andrew Moore with a nice catch right over Stephen Dunn, the veteran. They go hurry up here with under a minute to go in the half. First and goal. Weathers. End zone. Touchdown. Marquise Collins. So Memphis does find the end zone here late in the first half. Go! Seventeen to ten ball game. As I do believe Memphis does get a ball at halftime because Bueller did kick the opening kickoff, so that checks out. So we could, if Memphis holds Raleigh here, we could see a brand new ball game again at the, at the start of the second half here.
Well, we'll start with trips to the right in the pistol. Robertson in short motion. Strike. Britain's pass is incomplete, but a flag down. It'll be pass interference against Michael Wells. That'll be an automatic first down. Five wides here. We'll see what they call in terms of routes. First and ten. After the pass interference penalty, that is incomplete. I believe that was intended for Antoine Floyd. Number 13. Here's a two tight end set now. Culvert in motion, so they are for sure passing. Deep shot. Caught! Tyrese Redmond with a great catch. And Raleigh will call a timeout here. Two catches for Redmond, 70 yards. Britain's throw here is almost intercepted. I believe that was Vince Kelly, 54, in coverage. I want to say. Second down. Flag here. Aaron Jewell is the guilty party. That'll back him up. Second and 15 now. Hike. Britain looking deep. Pass is caught. Another deep catch for Tyrese Redmond. Probably calls another timeout here, and they are definitely within field goal range if they want to try that. Looks like they might decide to run a play first. Redmond in motion. Can we see him on another deep route again? Britain. Oh, almost picked. And with nine seconds, we'll see what they do. Could take the point. They will take the points here. Gilroy's kick is good. So a 10-point ball game as we approach halftime. And Memphis try and go for a big shot here. They will. It's caught. It's the first catch in the red, white, and blue for Ahmad Banks, and it's good for 34 yards. But that will end the half. It is 20-10. Raleigh scoring all their points in the second quarter. Second half beginning right now. <laughs> all right, we are back with the second half of action. And it will be Gilroy booting it out of the end zone. for a touchback. We'll see if Weathers can target either Wade or Banks more this drive. They need some explosiveness on this offense. And that is not what I meant by explosive. Robert Hale, the veteran linebacker, getting the tackle there.
Here's Weathers. As a man, it's Collins. Making the catch. Third and five, deep shot here, and that is more like it, but there is a flag down, and it will be P.I., but on Jalen Madison, who wasn't even covering late. That was Amari Lawson in coverage, but uh, okay, game. Anyway, we move on. Big play for Memphis to Wade. First down at the 40 of Raleigh. Tonight. Collins gets the handoff and he has some space down the sideline inside the 10. He'll go all the way. A 40 yard touchdown for Marquise Collins. And that is what I mean by explosive. Tonight. Kick is good and this is a three point game. How about that? A big rushing TD puts them right back in the game. They don't call it a rivalry for nothing. Bueller will kick it away. Redmond from his five looking for a lane and won't get one. Vince Kelly on the tackle. Four receivers set to start for Raleigh. Then in motion is Walker. Britain to throw. Looking deep. Got a man. It's Walker, but it's incomplete. Good thought there from Britain. Although just couldn't quite haul it in. Second now. Hand off here at Colvin. And that'll be Khalil Brown making that tackle. Go! Third down, a hand off to Colvin, and he has enough. Seems that. Raleigh is getting very conservative on their third down calls. We haven't seen a lot of passing on third and four plus. Seems that they're relying heavily on their run game. Colvin with 15 carries, still under that four yards a carry mark. And now this guy is the total opposite of that. Chris Bond has been having a fantastic day. A couple of great runs. And I'm honestly surprised why he hasn't seen the field more. Five carries for 41 yards and does have a rushing TD today. Colvin. Drag Vince Kelly for the first. Approaching midfield is Raleigh in the pistol. Empty back for Britain. That's the first catch for Bond. Second down. Britain under pressure. He will go down. It's Chuck Thirsty again. Charles Thurston with his second sack as a Memphis Liberty member. 
a big pickup from Brooklyn. Zedek! Britain, oh, almost jumped and picked by Atkins. Punt up coming, Marston will kick it away. Pinkerton to return. Not very far there. Memphis getting the ball back. Remember, they were down 14 before Raleigh scored 20 points in that second quarter, but nothing since for them. Weathers looking past Collins. That's Marquise Collins, and he somehow breaks out of that for about nine yards. Collins, toss play here, and a first down. <laughs> Weathers looking, has a man, oh it's knocked away, good defense. I believe he was trying to hit Tory Wade there on the comeback route, but couldn't quite connect with him. Second down, trips formation to the left for Memphis. On the carry, he'll go nowhere. It's Stephen Dunn coming in from his safety spot to make the tackle. One of the league's leading tacklers. He is third in the league in tackles. Coming into this game, he has 42 of them. And has seven more in this game today. Weathers has caught Collins again. Fraser there on the tackle. And it'll be a punt. Good job by Raleigh's defense to get themselves off the field. Madison trying to get the outside edge on Banks, but Ahmad will get the tackle there for the Liberty. Incomplete that time. Second and ten upcoming. For the Liberty. Nope, for the Royals. I know who has the ball. Jake Britton, 10-19 for 172. Play action. There's completion number 11 to Robertson. He had that big 33-yard catch back in the first quarter. Already third down for the Royals. They'll try and pick it up via the run, and they do. Again, we have mentioned the abnormality of running the ball on third and long, but that seems like no problem to Raleigh, as they have converted at least three third downs via the run. Incomplete. Yep, and we're back. Okay. Go! Colvin on the carry. Just want to be sure that we're okay, good. Sometimes the technology can be a little finicky, but we're okay. 
Third and 12 now. Over. Won't get that one. Kandarius Holiday on the stuff. Seems that no team, as of late, can establish a lead that is sustainable. Of course, as you mentioned, Raleigh was up by a score of 17 to 3 in this game. However, Memphis has fought back and made it a three-point game. And they have the ball here with two minutes to go in the third and could potentially either tie or take the lead on this drive. Weathers flagged out. Pass over the middle is caught by Collins. And it'll be an automatic first down here as that is Alex Ganey on the hold. Ten for Weathers and Company. That's wide open to Adrian Austin. The fullback. Converted running back, but listed as a fullback on the roster. <laughs> Collins on the run. Dunn makes the hit. Right at, or actually across the 50, the mark of the 49 and a half. As we tick down under a minute to play here in the third. It's and he'll fight his way for another first. Over a hundred yards rushing today for Collins. Against his former team. Lane on the carry, a great block from Theo Finch on the outside. A key block gets Memphis to near the red zone here as we end the third quarter. Collins on the run. Outside, but the broken tackle knocks him back to the inside. And he'll only gain a couple. Second and seven. After that short carry. I've only seen one catch from Ramad Banks with his new team. See if they throw him here. They will not. He'll actually get sacked on the play. It's Demarcus Grubbs, the defensive tackle. That's his second sack of the season. <laughs> Weathers pass almost picked. Fourth down, and they will probably be sending out Bueller here to tie the game. They will. That I the kick is good right through as Casey Bueller has tied the game here at 20 apiece.
as we wind down in this game. We will update you on some other games happening this week. After this play is over, this is a catch by Colvin. So this being the sixth game of the week, of course, Orlando taking on Baton Rouge, Columbus, Omaha, San Antonio, Albuquerque, Portland, Vancouver in day one. Game before this was Richmond, Virginia Beach. The game after this, <laughs> St. Louis, Virginia. As Colvin is outside, I picked up a first down. So again, St. Louis, Louisville after this game, followed by Wichita, OKC. And then day three coverage will include Brooklyn at Delaware, Iowa at Milwaukee, Tucson at Austin, and then Salt Lake City at Sacramento. All division names this week. And next week will be, looks like in conference week eight. That sounds right. In 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 conference games. Go. Britain under pressure. Caught Vince Bullard right over Khalil Brown. As that could have dangerously been intercepted, but no. Wow. Couple of should be picks for Memphis's defense. But somehow, Raleigh has dodged the bullet yet again. Britain will be sacked. It's Michael Rollins. Loss of eight there. <laughs> Britain to throw deep. It's incomplete. Trying to hit Walker. Third and 18, they need something good to salvage this drive. Would be a very long field goal for Gilroy. Ronnie won't get the first, but he will be stopped at the 27. This should be pretty good field goal range for Gilroy. And they will try it. This should be about a 44 or 45 yard try or so. And the kick is good. So Raleigh has themselves a late lead here by three in the fourth quarter. Wade on the return out to the 20. Actually, you probably can't get more on the 20 than he just did. Pretty cool. New drive for the Liberty down by three. <laughs> Collins and Madison on the stop. Collins has been the workhorse today in the running game, has over 100 yards. <laughs> Weathers, pass. Oh, I think that may have been a drop actually by Wade. The crowd certainly didn't like it. Goodrich on the tackle, and I believe they will be punting here with over five minutes to go. They will be. 
I'm sure the Memphis fans aren't too happy about that. But you do want to play the field position game here if you want any chance of a win. That's a good tackle by Wade. They're all looking to take up as much clock on this drive as they can. <coughs> Try and do that, not by passing, obviously, but it doesn't wide open. Man, that's Vince Bullard. 36-yard connection there. I thought there were going to be a running the ball majority of this drive, but I guess not. They're going right down the field here, not wasting any time. And they're already within field goal range. First and ten. Go! At Memphis is 33 under pressure. Incomplete. Go! Colvin will be stopped. Trayvon Webb there for the TFL. Second tackle for Webb today. Again, former Raleigh Royal. <coughs> big part of this defensive line. He uses that as wells on the knockdown there. A dangerous pass by Britton. And we will see what the Raleigh Royals do here on fourth down. They will kick it. This is a 52 yarder for Gilroy. Come up by six, and it is good. That could have been good from 62, the way he has been kicking lately. Nate Gilroy puts Raleigh ahead by six. Gilroy's kick is through the back of the end zone. Touchback. And Memphis. Man, if they score here, this could be quite the dramatic ending to this game. <clears throat> 348 to go. Weathers has a deep shot it's incomplete i think he was trying to go for theo finch with the home run ball there but could not hook up with him <laughs> on the full bank dive interesting call Collins, big run to the outside across midfield, and Madison there for the tackle. <laughs> Here's Weathers to throw on first down, has a man deep. It's caught, it's a mine, Banks! The biggest catch of the game, but it's offensive pass interference on him. Oh no! They're gonna say he pushed off. And that pushes him back 10 yards from the previous play. So he only has one catch so far. That was the catch that ended the first half. Did I? Here's Weathers. Good blocking, Tory Wade with the catch. That gets the penalty yards back and more. Two and a half to go. Second down for Weathers and Company, 13 of 22 today is Weathers. Good look to throw. He's got Banks on the wheel route, incomplete. 
That was a great design route there by Banks. Hitting a little wheel cross combo with Wade there. Very unique. Third down here, Weathers. Speaking of wheel routes, there's Collins on the catch. It's actually more of a slant and fly, but it looks like a wheel. Anyway, two minute warning here as Memphis trying to play spoiler here. Not really spoiler. They're at home and they have a better record, but trying to send Go! Raleigh back home. Looking very upset as that is incomplete. The Memphis fans surely don't want a loss in this one. Of course, their team being 4-2. and two, Raleigh being 2-4. and four. If Raleigh can get the upset here, it's that it. really be a factor in their playoff push as that is incomplete. Not really sure why he threw it away. I thought he had a running lane to be quite honest with you. Down that right side. Third and ten. Four receivers and Collins in the game. <laughs> Weathers. Pass. It's incomplete. He had Marquise Collins wide open on the check down. But he does not connect with Baker. And it'll be fourth. And they will go for it. Weathers on fourth down. Moore in motion. They look to throw. It's over the middle and it hits a linebacker right in the face. Turnover on downs and this game is pretty much over. I think. I shouldn't say that though. Memphis does have all three timeouts right. Britain's pass is oh almost intercepted. And Webb there on the injury, a leg injury. But uh if there's an injury, why do they call a timeout? That's interesting. Oh, an encroachment penalty on Thurston. That's not good. That moves Raleigh one step closer to victory. They are in the victory formation. Do they kneel here? No, they'll pass. Britain. Oh, I think that was intercepted. Tremaine ball in coverage. Redmond on the catch. And second time out burned here by Memphis. And I believe now Raleigh can burn the clock. They choose not to. They come out in a non-victory formation. They're actually passing here again. Britain looking. Deep shot. Redmond incomplete. Clock stops. A minute 27 to go. second down. I don't know why they're passing here, but it's caught by Redmond. And that'll be enough for the first as Memphis uses their last timeout. And that should pretty much seal the deal. Raleigh will get the upset here in Memphis. 26-20 will be your final. Nate Gilroy being the difference here with the two late field goals. Tonight. As we will get you St. Louis and Louisville as they do battle next live from Louisville, Kentucky followed by Wichita at OKC rounding out our day two coverage. But that will be it. The last kneel down. We'll take a look at some stats here. George Colvin, 22 for 81 and a score. 
Weather is exactly 50% under 200 yards. He'll get regressions in both categories there. Chris Bond having a great day. 5 for 4 to 1 in the TD. Redmond, of course, as usual. Vince Bullard having quite the day as well. 2 for 61. Stephen Dunn, 11 tackles. That led the team. That was actually over double the next best player. Sack for Grubbs there. Four field goals for Gilroy, as mentioned. A great factor in the win today. Collins, 147 on the ground. And 50 through the air. Ahmad Banks, four targets, just one catch for him today. I'm sure Nick won't be too happy about that. Coming ball, 10 tackles. Wells, a sack. No picks for either team. will be it for the player stats which are the game stats here 69 and 56 total play is Raleigh's favor total yards are pretty even but the passing yards edge definitely goes to Raleigh here 266 to 184 five sacks in the game three of them to Memphis and no turnovers for either team good game all around congrats to Raleigh for winning this one as visitors and for the NAGA, this is Commissioner Pasta signing off. We'll see you next time. Have a great one, folks.